Once upon a time, there was a lovely esophagus. It wasn't just squirming about on its own, obviously. We're talking about an esophagus, after all. It was inside the dog. One day, the dog became sick and was taken to the vet. Come here, doggy. Let me stick my scope in you, said the veterinarian, and as he looked into the animal's esophagus, his jaw dropped. Dear God, it's a giant freaking tumor. But you can cure it quickly, right? Because Massacre in the Butter Churning Club Part 4 is on TV in half an hour and I'd like to be home by then. Sadly, barrels of oil will sooner fall from the sky than I give this dog a cure. But let me explain. The esophageal worm, or Spirocircle lupi, is an internal parasite of dogs and related species. The adult specimens are 5 to 8 centimeters long and light red. The parasite occurs mostly in tropical and subtropical regions, but appears ever more often farther from the equator too. Intestinal worms live in the bowels, esophageal worms in the esophagus, big deal, you would think, but the lifestyle of Spirocircle lupi is somewhat more sinister. The infected definitive host sheds microscopic parasite eggs with its feces, each containing stage 1 worm larvae, or L1s. They get ingested by intermediate hosts, coprophagus beetles. Coprophagus being the polite version of shit eater usable in royal courts. Inside the beetle, the larva hatches and begins to grow, shedding its skin twice in under two months, after which its only job left is to wait. If the beetle happens to die of old age, the worm dies with it. If, however, the beetle is eaten by a dog, then bingo, the worm is on the right track. But let's face it, beetles fall prey much more often to lizards, voles, birds and such than they do to dogs. These small animals act as transport hosts, no worm development takes place in them, they just further the parasite's career. Should a dog hunt them down and eat them, it will get infected the same way as it would from eating a beetle. Of course, Doodlyboo, who weighs 2 kilos and just had its nails painted magenta, will probably not hunt for voles, but Rugged Face, the country dog who could catch a shark in the forest, probably would. Just to be clear, Spirocircle lupi as a species relies on a wild carnivores to survive, not dogs. Our pets don't get infected often enough for that. But pet owners are obviously more interested in the fate of Doodlyboo and Rugged Face. Once ingested by the dog, the larva burrows through the wall of the stomach with blazing speed in just 20 minutes, maybe it uses a wormhole, and migrates inside the wall of the gastric arteries to the aorta. The aorta is the largest artery of the body, even surgeons who juggle with gluten-laced chainsaws in their free time don't dare to poke it without taking expensive fear management courses first, but Spirocirca doesn't give a damn. <laughs> it settles inside the wall of the aorta within the chest and develops further, almost reaching adulthood in three months, at which point it migrates to the esophagus. Oh, migrates, well, it moves an inch. The male and female adults meet inside the wall of the esophagus, where they live and mate in peace, often dozens of them woven together like a swinging Laocoon group. Eggs are laid by the female into the esophageal cavity through a previously bored tiny hole in the wall. They drift through the digestive tract with the food swallowed by the host, then exit with the feces to begin the cycle anew. It's easy to see that if a dog is built like this, Esophageal worms are the least of its problems, but it's still good to know what kind of symptoms and damage the parasite can cause. The worm squirming in the esophageal wall triggered the growth of a mass of inflammatory tissue we call a nodule, sometimes four or six of them at the same time. In the beginning, the nodule doesn't do much really, but as the months go by, it can reach the size of a peanut that is the size of a lemon. As it grows, it narrows the esophageal cavity, causing swallowing difficulties and eventually the incapability to swallow. It can ulcerate, bleed, necrotize, get infected with bacteria and turn into an abscess, or even transform into a malignant tumor. Uh, cute little kitten. Meow. If a nodule bursts towards the inside of the chest, its oozing, infected, necrotic content can lead to severe purulent inflammation. 
the pus accumulating in the chest cavity prevents the lungs from properly expanding, eventually resulting in suffocation if no veterinary care is sought. Singing peanut butter. Larval development in the wall of the aorta damages the tissues and leads to aneurysm formation. Aneurysms are bulges in the vessel wall in which blood clots can form. If the blood clots are washed away by the flow, they end up blocking smaller vessels, cutting off tissues and organs from circulation, resulting in local infarction and necrosis. Furthermore, aneurysms are prone to bursting, which is a death sentence within minutes due to severe internal bleeding. Um, Easter Bunny dressed as Santa Claus with a gamer PC in its bag. If all this weren't enough, nodules turned tumors can lead to the painful thickening of the bones of the feet through a really odd metabolic process. Alright, let's move on. How can we find out for sure if a dog is infected with Spirocerca? Eggs detected in the poop inform us of an infection for certain. Unfortunately, eggs are not produced all the time, which means finding none of them in the feces is not a conclusive result. If endoscopy reveals the typical nodules in the wall of the esophagus, it's safe to say we have a diagnosis, especially if the nodules are perforated with the worm's butt protruding through the hole. Endoscopy is the method that can detect the disease the earliest, even before the worms start to produce eggs. Other diagnostic tools, such as x-ray, ultrasound and tissue biopsy, help us exclude other diseases and pick treatment options, rather than provide definitive diagnosis. How can we help a dog with diagnosed Spirocerca infection? If you don't feel like stabbing yourself in the heart with a tennis ball just yet, let me help. First. At the time of the release of this video, there are no registered products for killing Spirocerca lupi in your dog. That's not the end of the world, because effective substances do exist, even if not registered for this purpose. Ask your veterinarian. But killing the worm isn't really the greatest challenge. Before I over-exaggerate, in light to moderately severe cases, destroying the parasite is generally enough for a cure, even if several nodules burden the esophagus. However, in severe cases or if complications are present, simply getting rid of the worm doesn't solve the problem. Because what's the point of killing the parasite if the esophagus looks like the rosary of a troll and the nodules barely leave room for a semi-angry, thinly threaded cussword to be swallowed? You're not much better off with the worms dead if the malignant tumor remains and the chest cavity continues to marinate in a gallon of vanilla strawberry custard. These problems might be treatable with surgery, chemotherapy and antibiotics in a good case, but not in a bad one. And because the disease is hard to spot in its early stages, bad cases are not a rare occurrence. This is why preventing the disease is significantly easier than treating it. Don't let your dog eat small prey animals and beetles, and don't feed it raw meat. Playful outdoor dogs, hunting dogs, dogs in shelters and those that visit nature frequently are the ones to be looked after the most. Notorious bugaholics and beetle terminators are the hardest to manage this way for them, but for all dogs to be fair, it's more practical to use long-acting preventive spot-ons as part of the routine protection against internal and external parasites. Your veterinarian will help you out. It should be noted that cats are not favored hosts of Spirocerca. Even though outdoor cats on average are way more frequent consumers of bugs, lizards, voles and other highly endangered species than dogs, we only occasionally see Spirocerca infection in them. And even if they do get infected, it mostly affects the stomach and not the esophagus. Humans have not been diagnosed with Spirocerca lupi infection yet, maybe because it wasn't the tax office searching for it, but so far it looks like we are safe from the disease. Summing it up. 
Spirocerca lupi is an internal parasite of carnivores, mainly canids, which can be contracted by ingesting infected dung beetles or other animals that previously consumed such beetles. The parasite is capable of various evil doings inside the body, so only a jerk of colossal magnitude would think of creating a funny video about it. Because the damage caused by the worm is often very hard to reverse or is even irreversible, the best protection strategy is based on prevention. I've waited my entire life to finally be this intimate with you, my dear. Nothing could drain this moment, darling. Has anybody seen my loofah? The technical information in this video was fact-checked by veterinarian Roland born holding an endoscope Pshader. I thank him very much, as much as I thank Bayer for its support. If you've made it this far, why not like, comment or subscribe? Or check out my other videos. I know it would make at least one of us happy.